With the launch of King's Fall, my team entered into the day one contest mode and came away victorious in both normal and challenge. Alongside that victory in our snazzy new emblem, we also had quite a bit of loot that looked very promising, but we didn't know just how good these weapons were until Bungie updated the API. Today, thanks to an update, we can finally see what all the perk rolls are on the six total King's Fall weapons, so in today's video, we'll be going over these six weapons one by one, ranking them from best to worst, and going over their best PvE god rolls. If you're new to the channel, I cover PvE Destiny content exclusively, so if that interests you, hitting that subscribe button would mean the world to me, as we've been growing quite a bit these past few seasons. And also, before we hop into it, shout out to ShadowNet on Twitter for using my code on AdvancedGG's website, and you can do the same via the link in the description. With all that said, let's jump into this. Now, usually in these videos, we go over how to acquire all the new weapons before going over their god rolls, but you guys know by now, just play King's Fall and you'll come across all the guns in this video eventually. With that said, I want to start the video off with a weapon I'm sure many of you have already heard plenty about, and that is the Zowley's Bane. By the way, I'm probably going to pronounce some of these weapons differently from other content creators, but I'm ginger, therefore I have ginger intuition, so I'm always right, or I'll steal your soul if you disagree. Anyways, ironically, this weapon was one of, if not the worst weapon in the set back in Destiny 1, but Bungie decided to give this weapon a facelift upon its return, and hot damn, it is magnificent. This hand cannon can be argued about whether it's the best in the game, but what cannot be argued is it being outright the best in slot for that solar element specifically. Taking a look at the perks, we have nothing short of beauty here. Just like Fatebringer, you'll notice it can roll explosive payload in the first column, as well as Pugilist for those that might want to make this into a melee build kind of weapon, with the second column featuring Surrounded, Demo, Firefly, as well as, yes, Incandusi. Now, I skip over one for all here because I don't like it too much on semi auto weapons, but you're free to go for it here if you prefer. Now before going over my sole recommendation on this weapon, I want to point out the origin trait as all the King's Fall weapons have them, and that is the runneth over trait, which is essentially clown cartridge, but doesn't take up a main perk slot and is activated by only standing near teammates. This hands down is one of the best origin traits in the game in my opinion, and we'll see it heavily utilized properly on a future weapon in this video. Anyways, for Zowley's Bane, anyone not going for explosive payload at Incandescent is absolutely out of their mind. With these weapons being craftable, Incandescent once enhanced is one of the few perks that actually feels like it gets a sizable upgrade, and combining that with just the flat damage increase of explosive payload is just absurdly overpowered. This weapon can feel a bit clunky at times due to its very odd reload animation and the timing on when the magazine is actually ready, so I highly recommend just dumping your other perks like the mag and masterwork into reload speed. When everything is said and done, you have one of the best hand cannons in Destiny's history in your hands, making it an absolute must-have among any PvE player. Moving on from Zowley's Bane, the uncontested best solar hand cannon, I present to you a weapon that seemingly has finally dethroned Vouchsafe as the best Void Scout, the Doom of Chelchis. Now, despite being in an inferior archetype, the perk combinations on this weapon absolutely cannot be ignored. There is a ton going on here, so I'm just going to point out some specific roles that you might want to chase and why you might want them. Honestly, this is probably a scout rifle that I might craft multiple of because there's just so much good stuff going on here. First up, we have Explosive Payload and Frenzy, previously a role that you could only find on Fatebringer for a while. This is just a phenomenal role if you're wanting consistently high bullet damage, with one for all being there if you want a higher damage buff at the cost of some consistency. Next up, we have Firefly and Dragonfly. Never would I ever have thought to even see this on a weapon, just both of them there, but here we are. If you're a fan of explosions and you want both more of them and them to deal more damage, then this role is absolutely what you want. And finally, we have Adaptive Munitions and Frenzy, with this role ensuring that you'll be dealing good damage to shields regardless of element, and providing you with both extra damage across the board and a reload boost thanks to Frenzy. This is a fantastic option inside GMs or high-level sectors, so don't sleep on it. There are a few more combinations for sure, but those are the ones that I'm personally interested in. The perk synergies and different playstyles you have here available on this gun is nothing short of amazing, and I cannot wait to start collecting different versions like their Pokemon. 
Up next from Doom of Chelchus, we have the weapon that I was personally most excited to see reissued, as I was a huge fan of it in Destiny 1, and boy did it not disappoint. Here we have the Smite of Moraine. This adaptive pulse rifle is probably the only adaptive pulse I even like in this game, and it's all thanks yet again to the fantastic perks that Bungie has been putting on these weapons. Taking a look at the first column, we have ability perks like Pugilist and Demo, as well as Focus Fury for extra damage, and Stats for All for a reload bonus. The second column is going to come equipped with Swash to pair with Pugilist, Adrenaline to pair with Demo, Firefly to pair with Stats for All since the explosion can proc it, Vorpal to pair with Focus Fury for those GM runs, and of course One for All to yet again pair with Stats for All. There is, yet again, so much to love here, and given the variety of perks, just so many playstyles can be had with these weapons, making them incredibly versatile. The personal role that I'll probably be going for is Demo One for All, with Focus Fury Vorpal being a role that I use inside GMs when I'm probably on Divinity. Really big fan of how they handled this pulse, and it'll definitely be a staple in my kinetic slot going forward. Alright, moving on, remember how I mentioned we'd talk more about the origin trait on a future weapon in this video? Well, let's do that right quick by talking about the Defiance of Yasmin Adaptive Kinetic Sniper. If you're wanting a good sustained DPS sniper, literally look no further than Yasmin. It comes equipped with the perfect set of perks that appeal to a DPS situation in the best way possible. First up, we have Ensemble in the first column. This is going to grant the user 40 extra reload when standing near fire team members, which you're already doing to take advantage of the origin trait. And due to how good of a stat increase you get for that reload, you can slap on extended mag without even feeling the negative effects of it. Pair this with firing line in the final column for that 20% extra damage and you're good to go. Ensemble, runneth over and firing line all require standing next to teammates to take advantage of, making them the perfect set of perks for that synergy in DPS phases. You're going to get extra in the mag, you're going to be able to reload faster, and you're also going to be able to deal extra damage all by standing next to some teammates. Outside of sustained DPS, there really isn't much else to use Yasmin for, so that's the only role that I'm personally searching. Up next, let's move on to our only heavy weapon for the video, that being the old fan favorite Quillum's Terminus Machine Gun. This time around, Bungie made it stasis and gave it a similar perk combination to Ice Luna that I think many of you guys will enjoy. It's a 360 RPM though, which may turn some people off, although the only archetype I personally don't enjoy are the 900s, so I'm fine to be honest. Anyways, the god roll in this thing looks to be the unrelenting and headstone combination for the ultimate ad clear and survivability build. The first column can also roll stats for all if you really care about reload, but you can just spec into using the magazine and masterwork for that in my opinion, and you'll be good to go. I don't really recommend much else in the second column, maybe aside from Wellspring, as machine guns honestly don't even need damage perks anymore due to the amount of buffs that Bungie's been giving them. Anyways, building around this roll with these stasis fragments to make crystals break quicker and deal more damage is absolutely the play, and I'm sure just about anyone could have loads of fun with unrelenting backing them up to keep them in the firefight for longer. Lastly for the video, we find ourselves at the high impact frame arc fusion rifle known as Mida's Reckoning. And despite some buzz around the community, I personally just would never use this weapon. Taking a look at the perks, there's definitely a lot to love here. You have cornered for the charge time, field prep for reserves and reload, pugilist for melee energy, and lastly unrelenting for heals. The final column features surrounded to pair with cornered, golden tricorn for pugilist, vorpal for general damage on high tier enemies, and of course reservoir burst. Now the main hype around this fusion comes from runneth over allowing reservoir burst to proc multiple times in a row without the need to reload, and this is going to give you great ad clear. And that's super cool and all, but allow me to introduce you to, well, yeah. Add clear without the needed extra steps and generally just better in every single way for that purpose. If you like the fusion then that's cool but just know that it doesn't serve any practical use outside of just a niche fun playstyle to dive into once in a while. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for today's video. I apologize for the lack of uploads thus far this season, as I was pretty worn out after the day one raid, and was essentially just waiting for Bungie to update the API after I recovered, so I could make the video that you're watching now. These weapons are probably my favorite raid weapons in the game right now, but I'm curious what you all think in the comments down below. Let me know your favorite raid set and why, and I'll be sure to heart the comments that I like. 
Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching the video until the very end, as it does a ton to support the content. And as always, shout out to my Patreon supporters, as well as my Tier 2s, being Homebase Serenity, Admus, Vile, John, and Onrock, as well as my Tier 3s, being Cinco and Galumia. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.